So this week I'm in Newbury Park, California because there is a family who desperately need my help. Why don't we take a look? Hi, we're the Heredia family and I'm Joe. And I'm Chris and we have four kids. We had tried unsuccessfully for five years to get pregnant, so we did artificial insemination and on our first try we had Brandon. Brandon's four. Two years later, we thought it would be great. We'll have one more baby. We did artificial insemination. Again, we got three babies. We have triplets. They were born two months early. Taylor, Samantha, and Ryan, and they all just turned two. I'm losing Taylor. Brandon, wait there. Don't cross the street. Four kids under the age of five. They've certainly got their hands full. I work for a uh, city, uh, and I issue uh, building permits. I am an English teacher. I teach ninth and 11th grade. And when I get home, I have a lot of little people who have a lot of demands that need to be met. No. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, leave your brother alone. No. The simplest things are three times as hard with triplets. It's three times the trouble. Stop. Triplets hitting the terrible twos. Ah! That's too frightening. Now that they're two, I worry the most about losing somebody, about not keeping up with them, about them running loose. Samantha, come here. I'm not so much afraid at home, but it's when we go out somewhere. I was just going to say, I hope you have one, because I only have three. And they keep going and going and going. And my biggest fear is someone getting hit by a car. <laughs> and wait, please. There's just the physicality of trying to round up four kids. It's a mess. This is dangerous, actually. Mum learning how to handle all four kids is going to be a must. Don't start copying each other, please. Dinner time when I set them down is chaotic. Hands on your own plate, please. No. Hands on your own plate. I have to manage someone usually throwing a fit. Don't start. I feel like a waitress or a maid. And the worst part is, is they don't even eat the food. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whew. Brandon is a really sweet kid and a really great big brother, but he's also a four-year-old and wants a ton of attention. Brandon, that wasn't nice. He sometimes will throw a tantrum, hurt somebody just so he can get our attention. Don't poke your brother. <laughs> get off your sister. Brandon? Brandon. Stop it. And I think that's what he's really striving for is that attention because we pay so much to the triplets. Look, Daddy. I mean, they don't get to spend any time together because the triplets are so demanding, and it's a shame, really. It's a pretty hectic, pretty chaotic household. You guys have got to be back in the stroller. This is a parking lot. <laughs> Anything to make the day a little easier, a little less chaotic, a little more normal would be great. Of course mum and dad are exhausted. They've got four little ones. Who wouldn't it be? Hey. Super Nanny, please come help us. We have a four-year-old and three two-year-olds. We really need some help and advice. Please help. Hold on, mum and dad. I am on my way and we're going to get things sorted. See you soon. Nice to meet you, Joe Frost. Christy, hi, it's nice to meet you too. She comes in and her hair is up and she's in a suit and there's something intimidating about a British accent. It's absolutely nerve wracking, yes. Hi. hi. I'm <laughs> Joe also. Hi, Joe meet Joe, hi. <laughs> I wasn't there long before dad left for work. Mum wanted to show me her biggest fear. So I was thinking about maybe taking the four of them for a walk so you can see how that goes for me. Is that problematic for you? It is. Come on, Ryan, are we ready? Oh, come on. No, we're not going in the street. You coming? Sammy, are you coming? Mm -mm. Kids go off in four different directions, then they want to be picked up. Come on. I can't carry you all. I just can't. Come on, let's walk. Sammy, uh -uh, Sammy, stay. It was clear to see that Mum was struggling when out with all four kids. Sammy, where are you going? Come on. Brandon's lagging behind me. Samantha was up on someone else's property. Taylor decides to copy that. A lot of times when I go out, I think people are looking at me like I'm another Octo mom. Samantha, over here, please. Come on. Sammy, stand up. Tay, 
Taylor, whoever you are, stand up. And this is as far as we get, and I turn around and go home, because I can't chase them all day. When I started to talk to Mum, Samantha head off in another direction. Head on to a truck. Samantha, come over here with Jojo. On my hand. On my hand. Thank you, Sammy. I'm glad Joe could see how hard it is for me to take the kids out by myself. I'd like to be able to go out without losing a child or without being completely embarrassed. OK. Mum's so stressed out that she can't even manage to take those four kids 50 yards beyond her own house. This I will need to speak to her about. What is it that you actually need? I need a, a clone of me. I need another person here helping me do this. I can't stop for two seconds. But the reality is there's not another one of you. Yeah. I'm asking you to think about yourself. I need to be able to breathe. I need to, I can't have the floor like this with them running around. And that, for me, that's, it's like a breathing issue. I need to have it cleaned up so that if they're gonna run, no one's gonna slip, no one's gonna fall, no one's gonna get hurt. I think society tells mothers that you have to have your house a certain way and your kids have to behave a certain way. And if it is not that way in reality, then you're doing something wrong. And the fact that I already have multiples, I felt I had to step it up a notch. And that if the minute I showed this was difficult or there was a, a, I was having some sort of problem with it, that I would be judged really harshly. This is really you putting pressure on yourself then, yeah. what I'm hearing. That's been my entire life. your own perception of what you yeah. think people are thinking about you. Yes. So you've always been hard on yourself? Always. I've always worried about what other people think. Being judged that you're not doing your job properly? Yes. I don't know how to fix that. I mean, you are who you are. Um, I, I don't, you can't control that. How, who you are inside, how you feel. Whose expectations were you all living, living up to? I don't know. Yeah. If there's a person in my life that I want to be the most proud of me, like, it's a big deal to me, it's my dad. All children want to please their parents, but mum has gone beyond wanting her dad to be proud of her, and it's causing a lot of difficulties. So this I will need to talk to her about. <coughs> Later on in the afternoon, Ryan started throwing an absolute fit. Brandon, you can go play in the game. But Mum, for the life of her, couldn't figure out what it was all about. OK, Ryan, what? Being a mom in general is really tough, but when you have triplets, it's everything times three. Ryan, what? I, honestly, I don't know what you want. You need to tell me what you want. No, then we have to put these away. <laughs> Ryan. Okay. Excuse me, Sammy. Excuse me, Sammy. I got to go put your brother in his room. When Ryan screams like that, or really when any of them scream like that, I lose the ability to think clearly. I literally feel an inability to breathe almost. It's like an, an anxiety reaction, I guess. And I have to remove one of us from the situation. Where is he? He's in his room. Why? Because he's not calming down. I don't know what the problem is. And I need him to calm down so we can figure out what the problem is. And until he does, when I've got all of them on me like that and everyone starts screaming. Right. It's a timeout for me, I guess, but I need to get the situation quiet. The kids are acting out. Mum doesn't really know how to handle it. She's getting more stressed, and it's not a good situation for mother or child. Samantha, do you know where your nose is? Where's your nose? Where's your nose? No. Where's your nose? Good girl. Hey! Oh what are you doing? Dad arrived home when it was time for dinner. I do like pizza. Um, yes, you do. It's cheese. No. It's cheese. I don't. OK, well, then you will sit down and not eat it. Fine. I know that a major issue for this family is getting their triplets to eat. So I was curious to see exactly how dinner time would go. But it didn't start off well. Brandon, Brandon, sit down, please. Sit down. Brandon, you don't have to eat. You don't have to eat, but you need to sit down. Yeah. Don't have to eat. I mean, that's the whole point of dinner time, isn't it? And the other kids spent more time fussing and fidgeting around than eating. Mm. 
Yeah. Have some peas. That's okay, Brandon. You don't need to. I just want you to sit with us, please. It'll be like last night. I'll save their plates, and suddenly at 7 o'clock, they'll be eating again. You don't put your drink in your food. Um, Ryan, are you done? OK, you're done. At the end of mealtime, none of the kids had eaten much at all. So I can just look at this is what we were left with, right? Yes. Happy with that? Oh, of course not. Joe? No, not at all. What are we looking for? Them to eat. At least some of it. This is a major concern because the triplets were born premature and they need to be able to eat as part of their growth. With Mama to wit's end and the kids not eating a nutritious meal, I've seen enough. I need to sit down and speak to these parents. You had one child and then along came another three. That's a handful to say the least. Fact is that you are both feeling the strain of it, but if things really don't get put into check, they're going to topple over. No. Meal times. <laughs> I've, I've seen a pigeon eat more. Right. They don't even eat the portion sizes Correct. in front of them. <laughs> Correct. But we need to keep them at the table and encourage them to continue eating. And right now, there's been no endurance. So we need to hold it out. We need to push through all of that, OK? okay. All right. So let's move on to the next issue I want to talk about, and that's the word perfection. Apart from yourself, who's your hardest critic? The pressure stems in the desire for me to please my father, but it's not as though he's over at my house doing, doing a lot of criticism. There are a lot of joking comments made that I think he doesn't realize probably how much they hurt or how much they affect me um, because I know he's joking. Um, but I take it a little harder than I think he realizes. What are those things that he's unaware of? I don't think my dad really has an understanding of what it means to have a bunch of little kids around the house, yet alone three of them all the same age. I just don't think he understands that. So that is something that I feel would be very healthy for you to resolve. Yeah. So you have your duties, your responsibilities. Generally, you're outside and you're inside. Well, it's time for me to tell you both there needs to be change. I believe that it's gone slack on your end and it's tightened up your end. Wouldn't you agree? To a point, I would say yes. Uh, my job is to make sure that that lawn is kept up or the weeds are down so I don't become that house that everybody goes, oh, it's that house. In return, they could be turning around and saying, oh, and that's that dad that can't even handle his kids. And he's got triplets, you know. And your priority and your responsibilities are to step up every time when you're a father and you're raising four children. Okay. So the last thing I want to discuss are the triplets and their development. Because when we've been so used to dealing with them as a unit, as a package, what normally tends to happen is that parents forget that they're not one person. There's three individuals. Yeah, and that's the other thing with Brandon in the mix. I worry constantly about him feeling not as special. Because there's, on the one hand, there's something really special about being a triplet. And I just don't want Brandon to feel like he's left out of that. That's about what you guys do. There are things that I would like to do throughout our teaching that really brings home to him. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm different because I am older and I can do things because I understand more and I can physically do more. Mm -hmm. So evolving. Brandon would be a really big deal for him and would make life a lot easier for yourself as well. So we have gone through quite a few issues, things we do need to get on with. Right. Any questions? No. no. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mum's exhausted. And like a lot of mothers who have multiple children, you've got to be able to take the time when you can. But this mother doesn't, even when the kids are asleep. Sleepy time. Who's good sleep? Yep. Have a good sleep. Mum puts the triplets down every afternoon for a nap, which would give her an opportunity for some downtime. 
Can we just establish this is recharge time, okay? This is where we take a breather. It's a tough gig raising four kids under the age of five. She's going to have to give herself permission to recharge, to put her feet up for 10 minutes. You're completely on the go when you've got multiple children. So when you see that opportunity to take a break, you've got to take it to keep yourself going. And that's exactly what I want mum to do every day. Is that pterodactyl? Pterodactyl. It was hard for me initially today, but I felt good about it. This is nice. I'm not going to be dreading the babies waking up because I've relaxed. It's fine. So will you give yourself this tomorrow? Yeah. And the next day and the next and the next. Great, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> Having mum get more rest is just the first step, but we also need dad to lighten the load. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that these house chores can be divided equally. So we've got these duty cards. Got to work with it when you've got four kids, so that's what we're going to do. So let's lay them out. When Joe first pulled out the cards, uh, I was not very pleased. When I grew up, one of our jobs was housework, and we rotated that constantly. I thought I was done doing housework when I got married. Apparently not. So what we are going to do is work out who takes what so that we can change it up. Right? Things need to change there and shape up very differently so that mum doesn't feel like she's doing most of that work. I can do the dusting. I think, okay. I think that'd be very good to help out. Okay. I actually um, enjoy doing the laundry. <laughs> I, I actually like this one. There's something, I guess it's that perfection thing. You know what? I, I want to try to do some grocery shopping. I think. Fabulous. I mm. think I could uh, learn some more stuff and maybe try to feed the kids a little bit better than what we have or okay. maybe change it up a little bit. All right, so let's lay down what you both have okay. separately. It just was nice to have um, a different look at our responsibilities. He absolutely can still mow the lawn. I'm not pushing the lawnmower. <laughs> so any questions on these? You're going to have to leave me a note every morning to remind me to feed the dog. Dad was more than willing to do his share. But let's face it, it's yet to be seen. Well done, you both did good. Let's go and see the kids. All right. All right. Now that mum is more decompressed, I believe that she'll have energy for a real challenge. Sit down. Hands on your own plate, please. No. Dinner time. <laughs> mum and dad's first priority has got to be to encourage these kids to eat what's in front of them. Keep giving the children praise for how well they're doing. Well done, Samantha. You're eating your macaroni, that's good. Now let's have a little bit more chicken. You're seeing and you're acknowledging and you're praising. Mm, yummy. Way to go, Taylor. Good job. Good job, Brian. Have some more macaroni. Encouragement did stretch a little bit with these kids when it came to eating, but sure enough, they dug their heels in and didn't want to eat again. You need to eat some more macaroni. <laughs> we do not do that, no. Just take a bite. Eat some more. Get the spoon out of your hair. Sit down. Usually, sit. just say no. Just say you have to sit there. Yeah. Sit. Usually, mum and dad would have given up by now, but they stuck to their guns. And I tell you what, they got these kids eating again. Open your mouth and it goes. Yay! Yay! Hopefully, the kids will eat a little bit more and they can grow a little bit bigger. Lovely turn around there with Ryan. You're persevering through, you're following through with it, which is fabulous. What we are seeing is two parents who are beginning to understand now why their children have behaved the way they have and what they need to do in order to change that. Very slowly but surely, we are getting results. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Good job. High five. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> The next day I arrived and things were going pretty good. Where's Joe? Uh, market. Ah, look at that. <laughs> the duty card's working already. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. The rest of the morning I set up a progress chart for the triplets. This is for you to acknowledge <laughs> each child separately <laughs> and how far they're coming along. OK. Right. Helping mum use her voice more effectively. Samantha, stop now. I know you get it. I get it. You just need to use it and teaching Dad how to do a proper timeout. Take him straight to the timeout and explain why he's there, okay? 
But that afternoon, we faced what Mum was dreading, taking all four kids out in public by herself. So, we're going to get the stroller out first. OK. We're going to get Ryan and Taylor into the stroller. OK. Brandon and Samantha are going to hold on to the sides okay. of the stroller. OK. All right, and then we'll take it from there. OK, sounds good. I explained to her the importance of getting out the stroller, making sure that the kids were near her. When you're telling them something... Brandon, stand on this side now. Stop your it. Your voice is exactly how it is, firm, OK? Yeah. Samantha, I need you hanging on right there. The natural oh thing God. to do when you head for a park is to go straight to the playground, and we were going to do that, but my way. So we are walking past that area because there's going to be times when they're going to see things and you're going to have to walk past them. But they still need to be able to take instruction and hold on and listen. Okay. I thought that was cruel and unusual punishment for Brandon, but I got why we were doing it. Keep going, keep okay. going, keep going. We got to wait, we got to stop over here. There'll be the Easter Bunny, there'll be Santa Claus, and you'll be strolling. <laughs> keep going. And when they did finally stop at the playground, Mum gave them some ground rules. When you get to the slides area, we're going to tell Brandon that it's time that we can go off and play now, but he has to stay in the playground area. You are going to play in the play area here, but you are not leaving this play area. You stay on the dirt area right here, all right? I want to go play. You may go play, but you're not leaving the area. Go play. She didn't ask the children. She told the children where necessary. And before long, they were having fun. And she felt like she could take a breather for a moment, and she was very pleased with herself. Hi, Brandon. Hi. Ryan. And then Ryan started to run. Ryan, come here. Come here now. And there and then, for the first time, I saw Mum command authority. Right now, Ryan, come here. OK, stop for a minute. Just tell him, turn around, tell him. You stay here, otherwise Mummy have to put you back in the stroller. OK? Ryan. Hi. Ryan, you stay here, okay. or Mommy will put you back in the stroller. You stay here and play. Good job. Nice. All right. That's fantastic. I felt good about it. Physically, I think I was standing up a little taller. <laughs> That's great. I am a lot less fearful of taking my family out. Whoa! I like go park. Let's go. Are you done? I felt exhausted when I was done with the park, but I felt, I also felt more confident. Really good first step, really good. I've seen people do worse with one kid, <laughs> so you should be proud, OK? OK. All right. <gasps> wow. Wow. Come here, Brandon. I believe that Joe and Brandon need some special time together, even though the triplets demand so much time. I have here a range of tropical vegetation for you guys. So I went out into the garden and told Joe and Brandon that they would be planting today. And Brandon's face lit up as if he'd saw Santa Claus. It's like, flowers. Wow. Brandon and Dad's patch. I was very surprised and ecstatic at the same time. You have your watering can and you're going to need your gardening gloves as well. Perfect, Look. huh? It's very unfair to him that he doesn't get as much attention as I think he should. Hey, happy gardening, the pair of you. Look at the conversation. It was so cute to stand back and watch Brandon. Wow. Good for you, Dad. Taking the weeds from Joe and us oh, a little thank you, daddies. Thank you, Daddy. It was so sweet. You want to try this? Yeah. OK. I got it. You got it? Good job. <laughs> you want to plant this one right there? It was nice to have Brandon uh, with me working on the planter, and it was just our quality time. Good job. Brandon! Look what you've done with Daddy! Good. Look! What I want to create is special moments between father and son. Gardening for Brandon and Dad brings them closer together. Did you have fun gardening with Daddy today? Yeah! Would you like to do it again with Daddy? Uh-huh. Well, that's a good thing, then. Yeah. I'll put it right here, OK? Brandon and Dad's patch.
I am leaving for several days now. I'm leaving you with techniques and it's gonna be your choice whether you put them into play or not. If you are just consistent and you follow through, everything that was an issue before I arrived is not gonna be an issue anymore. When Joe leaves, I'm worried that the other things are not going to go the way it should go. Remember this, everything you do with your kids is about quality of time, not quantity. The truth is you hold the reins. So I look forward to seeing you in a couple of days. Okay. All right. Okay. So take care. Thank you, you look too. Look after each other, look after your gorgeous family. Okay. And I'll see you then. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. I really do hope that these parents remember everything they've been taught. I want mum to keep her expectations in check and I want dad to spend more time with Brandon. There's a lot at stake here. I've been away from the Heredia family for several days. I really hope that they've kept themselves on track. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was very convincing. <laughs> very convincing there, Joe. Mum's dinner. Get up right now because Ryan will leave. Ketchup. Eat the macaroni. You don't need ketchup for macaroni. <laughs> Brandon, you're a big boy. Sit down. <laughs> don't. Get your fingers out of your food. You use utensils. There. <laughs> nice job, Sammy. <laughs> Stop yelling, please. Brandon's behavior, yeah. without a doubt, needs to be dealt with. Yeah. It creates that environment that's so noisy and disruptive that actually it doesn't even allow the other three to just push through dinner and enjoy it. When he shows you the smallest beginnings of trying to disrupt lunchtime or dinner time, cut straight in with a warning. Behave yourself, sit down at the table and eat your dinner. Otherwise you're going straight on that timeout and you will remove him from his time out into the next room so that then you can concentrate on the triplets because they've been doing really well and you guys have been doing marvellous. So don't allow Brandon to sabotage that. Okay. Dad and Brandon. You coming, Brandon? Yeah. Brandon, slow, slow. Got to make sure the plants get plenty of water. Brandon, you going to hold this? Yeah. Okay, pick it up. No, 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 over here by the, by the house. Can you get it? Oh, there's a plant. Yeah, we want it to grow big and strong. What did you learn from that experience? That he actually wants to do a lot more and giving him the opportunity to do stuff and trusting that he can do it. It's very reassuring. So you gave him the opportunity? Yeah. And he has shown you that he is more than capable of being able to do that. That's a major lesson. Mum comes home. What, Mama? What? Okay, okay, calm down, calm down. It's okay. First of all, whoa, stop. No, no, no. Ryan, take that. Brandon, look at me. Look at me. Stop. Stop. No, stop. Stop. You do not yell at mommy like that. No, no, you're not listening. Stand up. We're not doing hugs until you listen. You don't yell at mommy like that. Okay? I'm glad the way you handled that, you really did take control of dealing with Brandon's behaviour very quickly. He wanted to feel that he was getting in his time with you and that he wouldn't be swamped by the triplets taking all your time and attention. And the more Brandon becomes reassured that when you do come home, you will be giving him that attention. You'll actually see that behaviour disperse altogether. Okay. This is all about the walk. Samantha, wait. We gotta hold hands. We're gonna stop at the curb. Samantha, now. Hands. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Brandon, you've gotta stop at the sidewalk. Ah, 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 ah. Brandon, stop. Ryan. You gotta look at triplets. Brandon, if you run, they will run. Stop running. Samantha, come hey, over what? here now. Oh. Okay. What we've seen here is you guys just take it to another level. Instead of going out with the strollers, you guys decided to do hand and foot. This is what I would say to you in order to get this polished up so that you're feeling good about just walking without the strollers. 
If you decide that they can let go of your hand, come down to their level, give them eye contact and say, you've got to walk beside mummy and daddy, okay? If you tell them to do that and they run off, you can then give them a chance and say to them, if you run off, you'll have to hold mummy and daddy's hand again. Are we worried about being judged? I, I, slight, yeah. but not, what it, not as bad as it used to be now. You know what, it's a process, it takes time and you're on the right track now. So we will continue to do things this afternoon. There are a couple of things that I feel are necessary. Christy's still self-conscious when she goes out with the kids, and mum and dad do need to learn together how to take these kids to different places. So it is something that I am going to need to address before I leave. OK. okay. Thank you. Thank you. I've seen some good progress with this family when it's come to sitting down at meal times. But the bigger test really is for them to feel comfortable in going outside their household and taking it to a restaurant. Right, who's hungry? I am. Very. All right, good. So we're taking it to another level. We're going to the restaurant with the kids. It's been about six months since we went out together as a family. My first thought was, what restaurant? This better be super duper kid friendly, have a ton of noise in it, possibly a mouse character running around. <laughs> like, where are we going? Um, I think they have a booster seat for you. Brandon, everybody. you're going to be on the other side. Mum's so worried about everybody else on the outside. And I actually want this lady to start becoming comfortable about the decisions she makes as a parent. There you go. <gasps> What is that? Is that a bee? First, the kids were colouring nicely whilst they were waiting for their food. But that didn't last long. They got bored after a while of doing colouring and they just needed to eat. But the food wasn't on the table yet and we saw Ryan start to get louder and louder. You need to wait for lunch. <coughs> no, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan was completely flipping out. He seemed to have lost all control. And then Taylor started losing control. I needed to remind Mum that she has an option. If he continues to scream, 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 and you're like, oh, this is too much, pick him up, take him outside, calm him down a little bit, and bring him back in again, you know? Ryan was setting off the other triplets. If Mum and Dad can sort out Ryan, then they can be on top of the whole situation. Yes, the car. Please. Give me the plate. Oh, here it comes. It's coming. Once they got the food, they really sat, they ate, and they ate a lot. Daddy, a little more pizza? Yeah, finish that piece. I guess he was hungry, my goodness. I know. I absolutely think that all the work at the dining room table really mattered at the restaurant today. I think it really paid off. Good job, Ryan. You guys are doing such a good job. Very nice, Ryan. It felt really nice and kind of relaxing. You are eating all your food. I'm so proud of you. All your food and then some. The kids ate really well. And Mum realised that how the kids were behaving earlier was nothing that Mum needed to feel embarrassed about. If there are some kids screaming at the table, then there are some kids screaming at the table. But we're going to do this, and we're going to do it as a family, and it'll get better. Well done to the pair of you. Thank you. Should be proud. I've got a big surprise for Christy. She told me that in her father's eyes, there was a lot of pressure with regards to how she raised her triplets. There are a lot of joking comments made that I think he doesn't realize probably how much they hurt. So I've brought her father over so they can have a conversation and resolve this. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi, Dad. I have with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have brought you both here because I actually have made wonderful progress with Christy. But when we touched on you, she became very emotional and cried because she never felt that she was able to get your approval. That's what I want to talk about today. He had certain expectations that she felt she could never meet. And so she's grown up as an adult being quite hard on herself. I get that I live in a, a family of men who have really high expectations and who make a lot of jokes. But I think sometimes you don't realize how much the jokes hurt when it's about my family. And 
I think as much as I go along with the jokes and as much as I joke back with it, that it's, it just has, I'm really sensitive to it, I guess, and it, it wasn't something that I had really, um, I don't think I really realized how much it was affecting me until this happened. She's always tried to please me. And so if I let her feel that perhaps something wasn't quite right, then that probably really hit her harder than either one of us realized that it did. I do a damn good job. I've got four fabulous kids and I work full time and and I think I'm doing a really good job and, and I know that you know that. What do you see Christy do that actually you admire? Well, it's just amazing that she holds down a job and comes home every night and has to work with the four kids and, and they're demanding, they're very demanding. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work and I have a great deal of respect and love for her that she does that and does it as well as she does it. Yeah. I think it was great to hear my dad say that he was so proud of me. Now the whole world has heard him say that he thinks I'm doing a good job and that's nice, it's sweet. So, where do we go from here? I acknowledge that I'm a little sensitive to things. Dad acknowledges it and stops the joking so much. This is about a woman feeling confident and making decisions that she's happy with. She feels good about what she does and so doesn't need the approval of everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too, baby girl. Joe's <sighs> just gonna go home now. Can I can kiss? You're gonna give me a kiss? Was that a kiss for me? It's like a Thank you. I have really felt very content with the time that I have spent with the Heredia family. This really has been about practical parenting. Say bye bye, Jojo. On a whole, I would grade this family an A for their efforts. You shy away from kisses, don't you? Now these parents are both feeling very confident, enjoying what they're doing every day. And to me, that's what it's all about. So I'm a happy nanny. I leave them very differently to when I walked in. <laughs> I like the fact they're all on the floor going, la, 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 la. When I first arrived, they were like, ah! Since Joe gave us the tools to calm everybody down. Thank you Take very much. Take care, you're welcome. The house has become a lot quieter and a lot more peaceful. Thank you so much. You've been, I'm feeling a lot better about myself since Joe's come here. I feel so much more confident and so much less worried about what people are going to think and what people are going to say, and I'm doing what I need to do, and it feels good. Mm -hmm.